Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. It's a beautiful day to show you how to make personalized Scrabble tiles for your wall on the Great Maker Show and Tell. Oh, this is such a fun project to make. I've seen others make these big Scrabble tiles for their homes and I couldn't wait to design one for my own wall. And we love to play games as a family every night at dinner, so these are perfect for us. I'm gonna show you how you can make these tiles for your own family, or better yet, bake them as a gift for a family that you know and love, especially one that loves games. Okay, so to make the big Scrabble tiles that go on a wall like this, I used three inch square wood tiles that I found at Amazon. These are unfinished wood. They're sanded really smooth, so it's not necessary to stain or paint them. You can, of course, stain them to match your decor, but it's also fine to keep them natural as I have because this is basically what the Scrabble tiles look like, right? Now to simulate the letters and numbers seen on Scrabble tiles, we cut black permanent adhesive vinyl um, just like this. And to make a set of tiles as large as mine, you're gonna want 48 inches of vinyl or four sheets of 12 by 12 vinyl sheets. You don't have to use black, of course, but the Scrabble tiles, the Scrabble tile numbers are black, um, and so are the letters, so you'll want to use that if you want to match the original Scrabble tiles. Now to put your Scrabble tiles all together as wall art like I have here, you're going to want a package of balsa wood sheets. I've used about seven of them to keep the tiles together as a unit. And then you also need two picture hangers that you would put on the back to hang up onto your wall as I have here. Other useful things to have on hand include a weeding tool for removing the excess vinyl, standard grip transfer tape for putting your vinyl onto your wood, a hot glue gun and glue sticks to stick your tiles to the balsa wood, and a roll of masking tape or painter's tape. Now I cut the vinyl for this project on a Cricut cutting machine using the fine point blade and a green standard grip mat. These can be cut on all the crickets from the Joy to the Explorer to the Maker, as well as other cutting machines. So are you ready to make your own Scrabble tiles? Let me show you where to find my free tile patterns, and then I will show you how to come up with a tile arrangement that works for your family, how to cut and apply the vinyl to your tiles, and how to keep your tiles all together so you can hang it on your wall. Step one, get the Scrabble tile design. Download the Scrabble tile designs from my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 270. Just go to the red bar at the top and look for libraries, and then either click get a password if you don't yet have one, or click enter the library. You can find the files by searching the page for design 270, and then click it to download an SVG cut file for cutting with a Cricut or another cutting machine, as well as a printable PDF. Step two, decide on a tile layout. One of the very first things to do is to decide how much wall space you have to work with and then how you want to lay out your tiles so they fit within that space. Now I knew my wall art had to fit within a space about 30 inches wide by 30 inches high, but you may have more or less room. Now you need to come up with a tile arrangement that works within that space. You can just get out a piece of paper and figure it out by hand, just keep in mind that each tile is three inches to help you determine how much space it will take up. If you'd like a little help coming up with a tile arrangement that works for the words that you want to use, go to crosswordhobbyist.com to play around with words and how they fit together. This tool not only helps you come up with a tile layout, but also variations so you can decide which one you like best. To use the tool, first enter all the words that you want to use in your tile layout into the auto arrange column on the left. You only need to enter them in the word column. You will not use the clue column for this project. Now press the arrange button to see the auto arranged generated layout in the grid on the right side of the screen. Now if you don't like that tile arrangement, no problem. Just click the unarrange button and your words will go back into the auto arrange column or you can click the arrange button again. And most times you'll see a different variation. I've also found that if you're not seeing the variations that you want, you can re-enter your words in a different order in the auto arrange column and click arrange again to get new layouts as well. Just play around with the tool and you will definitely find variations that you wouldn't have thought of on your own.
And once you choose a layout, be sure that the layout fits in your space. To determine the width, count the number of tiles and blank spaces from the right to the left of the layout. In my case, that's eight letters. Now multiply that number by three, because remember each tile is three inches square, and you'll have your widest point. In my case, that's 24 inches. To determine the height, count the number of tiles and blank spaces from the top to the bottom of the layout. And in my case, that's nine. So we multiply the tile stack by three and you get your design height. So my wall art of 24 inches by 27 inches, because that's nine by three, right? Will fit nicely in the 30 by 30 inch space that I have chosen to place this. Again, yours might be different. Just be sure that you know what space you have to work with and make sure it's gonna fit before you go to all the work of making this. And finally, I recommend you make a list of all the letters in your chosen design so you know what tiles to make in our next step. Step three, cut your Scrabble tiles. Let me show you how to cut the vinyl for your Scrabble tiles on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file that you downloaded in step one to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to unzip and upload SVG files, please watch my SVGs Made Simple training series at jennifermaker.com slash SVGS. My tile designs are made to fit the three inch by three inch tiles that I've used in this project. I provided a link to these exact tiles below this video, as well as over on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 270. If you're using larger tiles, you'll need to change the tile size to the size of your tiles, same as if it's smaller. To change the size of the tiles, first ungroup the design, select the layers that you don't need for your tile arrangement and delete them. Now select each of the remaining letters individually and change the size of each tile to whatever your tile size is. If you're using the 3x3 tiles like me, it's easiest to lay the tiles out on the Design Space canvas to be sure that you're cutting all of the letters that you need. So lay out the design just as shown on the grid of the crossword tool that I showed you earlier, or on your piece of paper, however you did this. If you need to use a letter tile more than once, just duplicate those tiles by selecting them and then clicking the duplicate button in the top right. Your duplicated tile will display on the canvas and you can place it where you need it in your layout. Once the design is laid out on the canvas, click the make it button. Now review the preview matte screen. Just remember that the preview screen will not look like your canvas. The tiles appear here side by side to save room on your mat so that you don't waste any vinyl. And you do not need to mirror this project because we're using adhesive vinyl, not iron-on vinyl. Now click continue and click on browse materials to find and select vinyl as your material to cut. I'm using premium vinyl here. Place a piece of vinyl on a Cricut Standard Grip mat, that's the green mat, shiny side up. Load the mat into your Cricut cutting machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. Step four, make your Scrabble tiles. Now to show you how easy this is to do, my design elf will assemble this project while I talk you through it. I decided to not stain or paint my wood tiles. I really liked how they looked right out of the box. However, you might want to stain or paint yours to match your decor. It's totally your choice. If you're painting or staining your tiles, be sure to allow plenty of drying time before attempting to place your letters on the tiles. But it's not necessary to stain, paint, or seal these tiles before you put your vinyl on. Now, once the vinyl is all cut, Weed the vinyl by removing the weeding box around each letter and the middles of any letters. This is a pretty easy project to weed. Get your standard grip transfer tape and cut it into three inch squares. Cutting your transfer tape to the same size as your tiles like this is gonna help you transfer them easier and ensure that they're centered on the tile. You are, of course, welcome to reuse your transfer sheet squares for several tiles, but for this video, we're keeping it simple by using one transfer sheet per tile. 
Now remove the backing paper from the transfer tape. Line up the transfer tape within one of the weeded tiles of your vinyl, right? Lay it down and burnish the transfer tape to the vinyl using a scraper tool. Flip over your sheet of vinyl, remove the vinyl from the paper backing. Now apply the vinyl to the tile. Burnish the vinyl to the wood using a scraper tool and remove the transfer tape. Isn't that cool? You now have a giant Scrabble tile. So continue transferring all the vinyl onto your tiles until you've finished them all. Now you could just go stick them all, all of your Scrabble tiles onto the wall, one by one, just the way that they are right now. But honestly, that's really not the best way. It's much easier to arrange and affix the tiles together before they go on the wall so you can hang the entire tile arrangement as a unit. To do this, put your longest word together first and build from there. Then fill in the rest of the tiles, matching a preset arrangement from step two. Now flip each tile over from left to right, putting the tiles at the far left side, on the far right side, and then continuing across to the left. You can use a straight edge to make sure the tiles are all lined up evenly if that helps you. Once you're sure of their position, lay a piece of one and a half inch thick masking tape across the middle of the tiles. Now this step serves two purposes. First, the tape holds all the pieces together before you glue them. And second, by taping first, you're able to flip your tiles over to make sure all the tiles are positioned correctly before you glue them, as it's really easy to accidentally put a letter upside down. And nobody wants that. So once taped, you can pick up the tiles and see if you need to make any adjustments. Just watch for those upside down tiles and fix them now. Of course, tape alone is not enough to keep the tiles together for hanging, so we need to attach them together with balsa wood. Cut your balsa wood into strips about one and a half inches wide. And now I know you're wondering, well, why wouldn't I do three inches wide? Because the tiles are three inches wide. Well, you need to connect all the tiles, so you need space on each tile to place the balsa wood strips. One and a half inches is the exact width that works perfectly for three inch tiles. You can cut your balsa wood strips with a Cricut portable trimmer. Just remember to cut each strip one and a half inches wide. The trimmer may not cut all the way through the balsa wood, however, um, it does score it well enough that you can just bend it to snap it after cutting. If you don't have a portable trimmer, no problem, just use a craft knife and a ruler to cut instead. Now you may have some pieces of balsa wood left over from cutting that aren't one and a half inches wide, and those are just fine to use as well. No reason to waste any material. Now determine the placement of your balsa wood strips. Make sure you don't place an end of the balsa wood at the end of a tile, unless of course it's the end of a word and there's no tiles next to it. Uh, having the balsa wood span the tiles, the, the gap between two tiles, uh, definitely adds to the stability of your arrangement. Now place a strip of glue along the tape on the back of your tiles. I also recommend you place glue above and below the tape for added strength. We didn't do this in the video, but later decided this would be stronger than just putting glue on the tape itself. And then place your strip of balsa wood on the hot glue and press into place, trying to keep the wood centered as much as possible to the tile. And once you have your first word assembled, keep adding the balsa wood strips to the backs of your Scrabble tiles. Basically, you just line up all the tiles where they need to be, tape them together, flip them over to check for accuracy, then flip them back over and glue on the balsa wood backing for support.
hang the Scrabble tiles on your wall, you can use sawtooth picture hangers. Now the tiles are thin, so be careful not to hammer the picture hangers through the tiles. To prevent this, you can glue an extra piece of balsa wood on the back where you want to place your hanger. This gives you the thickness that you need for the hanger to be securely attached to the Scrabble tile and not come through the front of your tile. Hooray, we did it. Isn't this super cool? Step five, show it off. This is seriously one of the best wall art projects I've ever made. I absolutely love these Scrabble tiles. I'll be hanging this in my dining room because that's where my family plays games together every night at dinner. Isn't this just so cool? So now if you don't need or want it to be so big, feel free to use smaller wood squares and just resize your letters to fit them. You can even make them really quite small and put them into a frame or a shadow box if you wish. If you've got any questions about how to cut or work with vinyl or wood, my team and I are happy to help. Leave your question below this video or ask over in my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters with over 250,000 other Cricut Crafters at the time I'm making this video. Now, if you need a Cricut cutting machine, I give one away every month. You can enter for your chance to win your own Cricut cutting machine at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And I think that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to make and personalize an adorable, adorable unicorn shadow box with paper flowers. It is so cute. Remember, I'm always interested in what you want to make. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <laughs>